So you have finished or nearly finished your PhD and now you're looking to decide what to do next. If that's the case, today's video is all about different options you can take when you finish your PhD. So let's get straight into it. Now the obvious route is obviously staying in research academia. When I mean by research academia, I mean applying for a postdoc in your area of expertise and doing more research, looking after taking on more responsibilities, helping to write more papers, and more grants, and then you climb up the hierarchy within research where you become a research associate, and you become then you know a, a fellow, then you get higher and higher to a kind of professor from a research point of view. Now this is essentially split into two parts because depending on the university that you are in or the institute you are in, you may end up doing some form of teaching and that is a avenue uh, within this subset of academia as a outlet after you finish your PhD. So you can do, you can be an academic, so you can be a, you know, a junior lecturer, a lecturer where you do a lot of teaching and then you have research on the side. There are many more active, you know, researchers who have projects, have research projects, but they do a little bit of teaching. And this is quite a common, I mean, rightly so, because many people who do a PhD may want to go into academia as their kind of trajectory and their career path. And that is quite an obvious and quite a suitable option for finishing your PhD. Now, I mentioned in many of these research tips and advice videos around why that needs to be thought about not just before you finish but maybe even after your second year because any of these jobs i'm going to be talking about in this video most often will want publications will want some evidence or some track record of doing research however difficult that may be that's unfortunately what we are classed on you hear me bang on about it time and time again but it is unfortunately what we are measured on so keep that as a pinch of salt as if you're looking at these career paths make sure that that is something that has been looked at or has been done already in terms of publishing papers, especially for this first career path, which is going down the further postdoctoral route, the research route in academia, or then looking at the teaching side within academia, within university, which is the lecturer route, going down the senior lecturer route, associate professor, professor. If that's what you're thinking of doing after your PhD, you're gonna have publications to give yourself a fighting chance in the interview process. And generally how it works with this career path is you finish your PhD, you then apply for positions, postdoctoral positions, lecturing positions, and you go through a process where someday you have to do a presentation, someday you have to show or discuss some of the research that you've done. And either or, again, one of the criteria is that you finish your PhD, you may have published something. And maybe you have some evidence in teaching within your PhD. You might have done some demonstrating. You may have had the opportunity to do a bit of lecturing. This is all essential for this particular career path. And this is something I want to do as my career path, but you come to know in future videos, it's not an easy thing just to go from a PhD to a postdoc, and more importantly, having a secure postdoc to then go on to bigger and better things. That's not an easy kind of promotion to get, um, and it can take, unfortunately, years. Let's move on to number two. Now, number two is all looking at the industry side of research. Now, I had a very few colleagues who were in the environmental chemistry department when I was doing my PhD, and they have a lot of industry contacts. There's a lot of companies who are making wastewater treatment, you know, chemicals or wastewater treatment, apparatuses and equipment to try and clean up wastewater. So within their research, there is a lot of actual connections within the industry. Now, many of them actually become researchers in these companies, so where they're now paid very well to carry on that type of research, but from a slightly business point of view, trying to make the better product, trying to make a better you know, equipment or apparatus for this wastewater treatment. And there's many research across the fields within art and design, business, computing, even health and life science. A lot of these have very heavy industry contacts, especially within the engineering um, area. So if your PhD or if your research is within a field that has quite strong ties to industry, a friend of mine also is in the freeze kind of thawing uh, process. Again, a lot of engineering. He's now working in industry. He's now working for a co company and he consults on projects. You did a PhD, then go down the academic route. He didn't, want it, didn't enjoy it, didn't like the you know way of doing a lot of teaching, and then sometimes the lack of funding, which is which is not easy. He wanted to go down the industry a more a more steady position perhaps. But again, it's it's not about which one's better. It's about which one would you prefer? Would you prefer more nine to five, or would you prefer more contributing kind of some new knowledge from the academic point of view? But again, it comes with a lot of headache. It's not easy. 
but industry is a very very wise and a very strong career path and um, especially if you finish your phd however it's not for everybody and the reason why i put it second is that everybody could go into you know academia or, or carry on their research or carry on teaching but with industry not all research has very strong industry contacts um some of literally right next to each other like they are working for these companies perhaps um some are sponsored from their phd is sponsored from an industry or from a company so it makes it easier however some researchers are maybe more abstract maybe more theory based and that industry job is just not apparent they haven't even thought of industry as as a career path after their phd however like with the, the first kind of career path this is again you apply for jobs you liaise with with industry contacts and then you go and kind of promote yourself through their ranks you know uh, with more senior researcher more consultant role more kind of project manager that type of thing and that's where the industry leads come down and any kind of processes or discussions or resources are fun i'll put it in the video description down below if you're interested in any of these career paths but industry is definitely one of them that you can pursue number three is looking at consulting and clinical work within the profession you're doing the research in i know that sounds like a mouthful but essentially that's if you're doing research in psychology for example you might want to embark in becoming a psychologist within the profession within the National Health Service, which is the NHS in the UK, or within your chosen, you know, area of expertise within your own country, that you might want to become a consultant in that profession, or you might want to become something clinical within that profession. For example, let's say research is in pharmacy or pharmacology, you may want to become a clinical pharmacologist, or if you're in the area of nursing, you may want to become a nurse and have the research background with you. So this is again a very separate slightly abstract career path but some that a lot of people um, go into there's many people who i know who do research in biomedical science but when they finish their phd they want to become clinically trained so they're doing medicine because they want to utilize the clinical aspects and the research aspect together um for their career path so if you're an engineer or if you're you know a psychiatrist or if you're in the accounting uh, area you want to become a certified accountant even though you have a phd so that's what I mean by consulting and looking at the clinical aspects in terms of job prospects for your PhD. So don't rule that out. This is something that not everybody looks into, but it is an option that you can go into, especially if you want a break away from research. You want to enjoy, you enjoy the area, but you may not want to do too much research for the time being. You can do, you can just go into the clinical aspect, you can go into the consulting aspect. And again, I believe this covers quite a wide range of research topics so many people from the humanities or art design they can be you know consultants for art and design they can be you know some who are doing game design or fashion design they become consultants for fashion and that's you going into the profession itself as opposed to just researching and that's something that you can definitely look into so look at the research that you're doing see if there's an actual profession within it so Again, engineering or nursing, biomedical science, pharmacy, accounting and business, you know, computing. You want to become a certified computer engineer or a computing consultant because you now have a background, you have a PhD and you've got credibility, if that makes sense. So that is also another career path that you can go into after your PhD. Now, number four is something I've seen a lot of PhD students do as an interim whilst they're deciding what they want to focus on and that is scientific journalism so that's like medical writing or scientific writing where a lot of phd you know doctorates people who have a, have a phd they end up working for companies who do a lot of report writing a lot of paper writing a lot of journalism from the science point of view so they find something amazing in the world that some researchers are doing and they write a report on it or they write a you know column on it or they write a paper on it they actually these companies who write on your behalf and I see a lot of people have gone into this as something they enjoy they enjoy writing it's a bit more flexible and have many deadlines and actually as we all do but it's something that they enjoy doing and that's something you can go into whether it's psychom we call it scientific communication that's the I should have said this at the start but that's the umbrella term scientific communication and that's what many people end up going into because it's creative you get to do maybe videos like this this is technically a form of scientific communication it's a bit more away from the hustle and bustle of the lab or hustle and bustle of research deadlines but it's something that you might be passionate about you might enjoy conveying 
a message regarding science, regarding research. And that's something you can definitely go into. Um, so psychom communication is a, a, a well-needed profession and something that you can delve into, even if it's for a little bit, you can have a career in it as well. So that's something you can also think about. And again, like with any other career paths, you can apply for jobs in there and then take it step by step. Number five, which is a interesting one, is people actually go into teaching, but not in the university sense, in the primary school or secondary school or even college sense here in the UK, so which is kindergarten, elementary, high school, I think. Um, currently, comment down below if I got that right, which I'll be quite happy if I did. And so they go into teaching from a different point of view, where they become actual teachers, not lecturers. And I think because they enjoy teaching, but didn't want to, they wanted a break from university. So that is definitely a an outlet or an option when you finish your PhD, that many people do certain certifications or accreditations to then give them the ability to teach in schools, as opposed to then teaching in university. Now, many of us know there's different accreditations for different rulings on how to teach, whether it's at the university, at the college or at school. So there's no people who have a doctorate end up doing that because maybe they enjoy the shorter time frame in terms of being at work but then you do a lot of work out from home because being a teacher in the UK is, is not an easy thing and maybe in the country you live being a teacher in school is is, is it's not an easy job. It's, it's quite, it can be quite difficult. But some people maybe like to work with children, they like to work um, and cultivate them and that's something maybe as a passion or desire. And see many PhD students actually go from being in the university doing a, a PhD to then working and, and teaching um, in schools so that's something that you can consider if that is a something you may want to do or may want to try out for sure I and mean, give it a shot and lastly one of the biggest and unheard of career options which is also really useful is a complete career change you may want nothing to do with research that you've had whether a great experience or a terrible experience and you just want a break you want something completely different you can do and that is people go from doing a PhD in pharmacy to becoming an accountant people go from doing a PhD in humanities and doing medicine people have a massive career change and that's something you can definitely definitely do so don't rule out that as an option it is scary to think that you did all of that effort to get into your PhD you did all of that effort to do a PhD and then after that you actually found it not your cup of tea and you want to create it and that's not a bad thing that shouldn't be frowned upon that shouldn't be you know looked at as, as a negative thing because you might just want something a new challenge you want a new desire or new you know something to do that's completely different to what you enjoyed before because you just want something nice you want something different you want something exciting perhaps not to say that research isn't it's just that you want something new essentially that what that's what a career change is you want something different and you want something new and that's if that's the case definitely consider that don't rule it out because just because you're in research doesn't mean you have to stay in there. You know, just because somebody does a job for ten years doesn't mean they have to stay in there. They can do something completely different. You know, and that's something that you can do. So definitely consider that when you're thinking about what to do after your PhD. So guys, those are some quick little tips on avenues that you can look at when you finish your PhD. So these are some career options that you can choose if you didn't know already. And don't rule out any of them because you may not realize that actually that's actually for me so do when you're towards the end of your PhD or if you have finished and you've got a bit of time do delve into some of these do trial them out or do actually apply for jobs and see how it is before you decide to stay in a particular career path but word of warning you can change if you want to and if you enjoyed videos like this do consider subscribing if you can it's down below it'll be helpful for me and the channel it'll be a, a, a big thing so it would mean a lot and a thank you for those who are already subscribed and who have watched this video kick a like as well just add a little bit extra for me and the channel and i shall see you in the next one take care